Hello there, I'm the student and today will be the first episode of EU4 Tutorium. So enjoy all the information that you'll ever need to understand dynasties and personal unions. Let's get right into it with the first question of the community. Umi asks, how does the contest PU mechanic work. He means stuff like uh, what happens if, uh, for example, the English ruler over here dies without an heir and then a succession war triggers. And funnily enough, there was another question from Argos Pontoth, who asked what determines the type of succession crisis. So if it, there is an instant personal union or a foreign monarch or a local noble, uh, as in this case of uh, England, for example, or a succession war uh, upon the ruler's death, of course. And uh, I can already tell you that uh, there is a difference between uh, yeah, a personal union or a no local noble, uh, which is if they have a royal marriage or not. So for example, over here right now, the English noble would succeed the throne if Henry VI dies now. But if I royal marriage England, then you notice that I'll get a succession war between me and Castile could contest it. And uh, the way that it works in terms of the contestant is that it is always the biggest rival of the country. So you can see those nations have rivaled England and the biggest rival Castile is contesting the Union. That is always how it works, except some other nations would have claimed the throne or something, then they might contest it, but typically it's the biggest rival. And then now if I go for date, uh, let's say uh, 1500 maybe, there we go. Now you can see at, as the date changed, uh, there will only now be a De Lusignon or so my dynasty coming on their throne and no longer a succession war. And the thing that this works is that there are different uh, pulses basically in the game, different uh, chapters uh, that are set from the timer uh, on, on the date actually that we are in. And uh, at most of the time, 75% of 74% uh, of the cases, uh, there will be a foreign noble coming on the throne, just as a de Lusignon in this case. But uh, there are also other phases that uh, where then, you know, you get an instant inheritance or where you get uh, a personal union with a succession war. And in terms of when what happens, there's actually a really interesting chart posted on Reddit lately. I'm going to show it on the screen right now, of course, but I'm going to also set the link in the uh, video description. But anyways, this chart says actually really nicely where uh, what happens and why things happen. So uh, definitely have a look at that. I think that chart answers already most of the questions for personal unions. And, but anyways, let's move on with the question of K1 Tsun. What is the best nation for Atwick's legacy? And if I had any tips for that. And generally the normal countries like uh, Austria, uh, Bohemia, Hungary, Poland, all of these nations are pretty good for that because they get scripted personal unions at uh, all of each other basically, if you try, uh, if you try that uh, in game of course. Also Hungary and Austria get uh, claims or personal unions on Naples, so probably those two a little better than uh, Bohemia and Poland. But anyways, there are other nations such as Provence over here that already starts with a personal union and gets personal unions on Naples, Aragon and Hungary, which uh, also includes Croatia. Uh, although it uh, gets inherited most of the time. And also Provence has Diplo reputation and what you can't see also two diplomatic relations in the idea. So Provence is definitely a good idea. And then of course Spain for the Iberian unions, Naples, and then later England and Austria. Very nice tag Spain. And that's, uh, that's it for the best nations, I would say. And for any, any further tips on how you can do it very easily, uh, you should 
pr uh, you should just uh, watch my video on how to instantly PU any nations because uh, yeah that basically fixes the problem uh, very easily. Next question is from Panku Lowe's and he asks is there any way to make PUs not take a Diplo slot? And the answer is sadly apart from the Austrian missions which allows uh, integrated personal unions no there is uh, literally no other way in the game uh, except for of course uh, the strong duchy's privilege that also works with only personal unions but uh, it of course doesn't fix the problem entirely it just helps a little bit next question is from uh, bad pack and he asks how to get a popular dynasty on your throne and generally the best idea is uh, to actually let your ruler die without an heir so for example if i right now disinherit my uh, heiress over here you're going to see that i'll get a lancaster on the throne which is already a popular dynasty i could do the same thing with castile for example the only requirement is that you have to have a royal marriage with that nation that you want to take the dynasty of and if you have no other royal marriages then it's actually guaranteed that you get their dynasty but anyways there is actually something really interesting for role play reasons uh, only sadly because uh, if you have a local noble coming on the throne such as uh, with uh, Scotland over here then the dynasty name of that local noble is chosen by a specific culture-based dynasty name and there are actually a few names per uh, culture basically a few dynasty names per culture and uh, one of these is chosen randomly but interestingly enough there are a few interesting dynasties in that uh, pool of uh, possible dynasty names for example there is a Plantagenet dynasty name for the English local noble so if you play England and get uh, constantly local nobles, also local nobles from the um, elective monarchy, which also counts the way, then you might get a Plantagenet dynasty on the throne again. And the uh, same counts for all the other uh, cultures in, in the game. Uh, you can just have a look on this in the game files if you want to, or otherwise just test it out in game. Henry Mossa asks, how to bank more government reform progress for the PU trick that I presented in my uh, in one of my latest PU videos of the instant personal union guide. So the way that you generally want to do it is basically to uh, have high crown land, which uh, gives a positive effect if you are above 50 crown land. Uh, and of course you want to have low autonomy to get the maximum base uh, of uh, 0.83 per month or more for republics if you are a republic of course but uh, then you can't get personal unions but anyways another way is to increase this is the uh, venetian monument plus 30 percent government reform progress in the uh, on the highest tier over here as you can see as well as there is a reform on tier 3 that gives another 20 percent and uh, otherwise if you don't want to do it the regular way then you can actually use the almost infinite government reform progress exploit that i posted a little while ago where you basically change uh, out of uh, scripted culture based tier 1 reforms that have a parliament and then also and then keep taking the parliamentary bonus for uh, government reform progress and then uh, delete the parliament and so on and so on so that would be the only other way from apart from the regular way ludo van Wieringen asks how stackable is the years for personal union integration modifier and that is a pretty simple one because actually there is a policy a policy of infrastructure with uh, diplomatic ideas as you can see right at the top the third uh, from the uh, top over there here's for personal union integration minus 10 that's minus 10 then there is actually minus 10 in the uh, austrian mission tree and then there is another minus five from the burgundian state reform over here so that's already minus 25 years 
And then if you play Denmark and get the unified Kalba Union, so the upgraded version of their current one from uh, their mission tree, basically, then you, uh, that reform gives you another minus 40 years of personal union integration, which means that at maximum you could get minus 60 years of uh, personal union integration, which is more than the 50 years that it actually takes, right? If you play Denmark and get the Unified Kalmar Union and the policy, you can literally start integrating a personal unions the day that you get them, which is already, of course, pretty broken. And a slightly lighter version of that would be an Austria one where you switch to the Burgundian uh, Tier 1 reform, which is culture based, and then you would at least already only take 25 years for that. Laborik Kraftberg asks, can you keep personal unions if you change your government type? And the answer is yes, simply yes. And they work exactly the same, having your ruler always, even if you elect them for like every four years, if you are a republic, for example, they still overtake your ruler every single time. Classic username asks, can you get the Timurids dynasty to form the Timurids later after 1490 without the decision to enthrone the Timurid prince? That, uh, by the way, all only works until 1490. And the answer is yes. And for that, actually see my fourth uh, question on this video, because it's basically nothing else than uh, letting your ruler die with a foreign noble coming on the throne, except that you just need to roll marriage the Timurids and uh, yeah, you would be uh, Muslim anyway, so you can roll marriage them and get the Timurids. Or any other nation that has the Timurid dynasty would of course uh, work as well. Arten Le Boss asks, can you get the Burgundian inheritance as non-Christians? And the technical answer is yes, because the only requirements for them choosing you uh, with the um, event over there is for you having a royal marriage with Burgundy. But uh, in practice, uh, you saw that already with the Timurids, you can't royal marriage people that are in the Christian religion group if you are not in the Christian religion group. And that means that the only way to get it as the Ottomans without changing your own religion would be to convert Burgundy to the Sunni faith, royal marriage them, and then wait for the event. But uh, yeah, this basically means that the answer should be no in practice, but yes, in theory. Ted Stratz asks, what is the fastest way to annex a personal union? And that is a pretty simple one, just stack a diplomatic annexation cost modifier, such as the one from Influence Ideas over here, and then do that in combination of the trick that I showed on the sixth question in this video for the years to person, for personal unions to integrate, because if you combine that, then you could immediately start integrating the personal union the day that you got it, and if you have stacked the annexation cost reduction to minus 100%, then it will only take you a few months for a personal union from getting it to integrating it. And last but not least, the last question from today, Gabri Immortal asks how to get a female ruler for the Spice Girls achievement. And the answer for that is also pretty simple because you, you can get the achievement if you have a consort, which means the easiest way would be to simply get a consort regions. So uh, actually get uh, right now an heir basically. So let me just show you real quick. So get an heir and then uh, once your ruler dies, your Queen Regent is going to take over the throne, which means you have a female ruler right now and you could get the achievement right now. Otherwise, you could also let your uh, male monarch uh, be over 50 years old and then 
uh, keep disinheriting your heirs to trigger the talented amb and ambitious daughter event and then let uh, her take the throne afterwards. So that's it for today. I hope you've got all the information you needed to bring your personal union game to the next level and try it out in the next game that you play. Anyways, regarding the topic of the next video, it is very important that you right now ask me questions for the next video topic, which will be trade, because I've got a lot of messages that I should do a video on this topic on trade. And that's why the next video of this series, EO4 tutorial, will be about the topic of trade in EO4. So ask me anything regarding the topic of trade in the comments right now and I'll answer them in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed the video for today and we are going to see, as always, on the next Monday.